on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? that The Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and all of the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene. Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, then he went home amazed at what had happened. The gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior. Please join me in prayer. God, we go with the women to the tomb with low expectations, expecting to see you there as a corpse. And just like the women, we are amazed that you are risen. You are risen indeed. Alleluia. Forgive us when we forget your word, when we forget your promises, when we make you to be a little God. God, send the power of your Holy Spirit that indeed we may know God's power, God's abundant and extravagant love. And we may shout with the women, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Most every day I wear a cross. I do this basically for two reasons. One, so that others will know who I am and whose I am, but also to remind me who I am and whose I am, child of God. But as I was reading this text and thinking about it for this week, I wondered, should I be wearing a cross? Maybe I need a stone. Maybe I need a picture of an empty tomb. Because if I just wear a cross, does that mean I'm just follower of the crucified God? And that's not the end of the story. We are followers of the crucified and resurrected Lord and Savior. Now, of course, the cross is a symbol and proof of God's love for sinful humanity. But this question, why do you seek the living among the dead, exposes us to something that I know is true for me and perhaps is true for you. 
Sometimes we forget, like the women going to the tomb, that there's something much more magnificent beyond the cross that gives the cross its glory. If we get stuck on the cross without going to the resurrection, then our faith can feel like death instead of triumph. The resurrection takes our faith from tragedy to triumph and gives us life eternal. So why do we look for the living among the dead? Is it because we have forgotten the words of God as he travels with us? Is it because perhaps we doubt his promises that indeed he will be risen in three days? The women in our text today needed a resurrection. I'm guessing that we in this world today need that same kind of resurrection, that same hope, that same abundant love that these women experienced after they discovered that the tomb was empty. Think about all we have gone through these last two years, still fighting the effects of a pandemic, praying for those caught in the war in Ukraine and for all of the nations involved in it, and then our own challenges of life, health challenges, loss of a loved one, loss of job, and the list goes on and on. We come today needing to hear that promise of resurrection that gives us hope that there is more beyond the cross that gives the cross its glory. I once had the privilege to walk with a young woman who was really struggling with life. And she had thought about ending her life many times and had attempted it but did not succeed, thanks be to God. And her mother needed to run an errand on a Good Friday and she called me and asked if I could come and sit with her daughter because she was on suicide watch and of course, I was there. Well, we talked. She told me some of her challenges of life, and they were heavy. They were hard. They were really burdensome. And I kept telling her, I know we live in a Friday world, a Friday that is dark and filled with sin and lacking hope and joy, and love for one another, and again, another list goes on. But I promised her that that wasn't the end of the story. I promised her that on Sunday, there was another part of the story that brought that hope, that joy, that strength to be able to walk through those times when life felt so heavy and burdensome. I left her early Easter Saturday not knowing what the outcome would be. And imagine my joy and surprise when I saw her in the fellowship hall with her Easter egg purple hair eating eggs and pancakes and bacon. And I said, you're here, yay! And she said, well, you kept talking about this Sunday thing. You kept telling me there was something more than this dark Friday. 
You kept telling me there was a reason to live. You kept telling me that there was someone who loved me so much that he gave his life for my life. And so I had to come and find out about this empty tomb. I had to come and find out if it was real. And she did. And we were allowed the privilege to share the Easter message of hope and to share the sacraments of Christ's body and blood sacrificed for her and for you and me. Unfortunately, I had a friend who had to do a funeral for a young man who completed suicide. And the father asked the pastor, could we do the funeral on Easter Saturday? And the pastor said, of course we can, but why do you want Easter Saturday? What is it about Easter Saturday that would make you want to gather? And he said, well, I need to know that there's something more than tragedy. I need to know that empty tomb, that resurrection that gives me hope. That is the truth of Easter. That is the message of Easter. That there is much more than just the cross. That is not the final word. God's love and grace and mercy came and it was exhibited in that empty tomb. When the women went to the tomb and were asked by the messengers, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May this Easter fill you with hope, with joy, with peace, and with promise that we are all children of a God who loves us so much that the cross was not the final word, the empty tomb, the risen Savior. God's love is the final word. Amen.